Hello, everybody, and good afternoon, evening, morning, or whatever it is where you are. And uh, we're here today. We're going to uh, do a little bit of a group discussion uh, on the theme of this year's Learning Disabilities Week. And that is very much about um, returning back to kind of living our lives as they were before, before the COVID pandemic and how that's impacted on us and what differences it's made to our lives. And today I've got some special guests with me and I'll come first to Kirsty if you'd like to introduce yourself, Kirsty. Good afternoon. My name is Kirsty Warwick. I'm a experience by experience with Pebble All Stars Hotel. Thank you, Kirsty. Good to have you along and uh, nice to hear from you today. And Gavin. Hi, I'm Gavin Halcroft. I'm an expert by experience advisor for the Health Liaison Team and Purple Star Strategy Team. Thanks, Gavin. Good to have you along. And finally, we've got Sam with us today. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Prowse and I'm an expert by experience advisor for the Adult Disability Service. Hello, Sam. Uh, good to see you. And I'm Ian Lawrence. I'm a team manager uh, for East Hearts and Broxbourne Adult Disability uh, Services. And I am just facilitating today and we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. And so if it's OK with everybody, I'm going to kick off with question one and that's coming in the direction of Sam. So, Sam, how do you think the pandemic uh, changed your life? Uh, I think it's changed my life massively. Um, and I think it's changed uh, everyone's lives. It's probably made me appreciate people a little bit more um, because I think, you know, sometimes I like to spend a lot of time on my own previously before the pandemic, but the pandemic has made me spend too much time on my own and uh, put me out of kilter where I, I need the balance of people to, to check I'm OK and uh, also to be able to check other people are OK. I think uh, the pandemic has forced us to do a lot online um, and I, I love technology but sometimes um, it can be awkward. Do you think it's um, the, the the fact that we didn't have any choice Sam do you think that kind of makes it difficult? Massively because I think you know like it like life's all about making choices and choosing what you want to do and what you don't want to do um, and when something's forced upon you, uh, you then, you know, you, you have to go with what's being said or, you know, like to, there, there, there's all of the worries about am I doing what, the right thing? Am I not? Um, and I think if I if I if I have the ability to make a choice, I can make a choice that. You know, normally I could make a choice where someone else may say I don't agree with you, where like with the pandemic everything was like you have to do this you have to stay at home you you, you can only go out for an hour a day for exercise uh, type thing and being so restricted so it's been quite strange and quite hard and, and quite anxiety inducing do you think yeah definitely i think there's times where it's been um quite stressful um <laughs> and it, it's it, it's difficult and you know like as the pandemic's gone on and the advice has changed and sometimes the advice that's given to you now is conflicted to what different to what was said before and that's quite hard because i'm i'm a bit of a stickler for what, once you tell me a rule and then to unbreak unbreak that could be quite difficult um there was one time in a supermarket um where i just got myself into a little bit of a panic and um i could feel my heart going absolutely crazy and uh I basically th there was a point there where I almost felt like I was just going to abandon the whole shopping trolley. Um, but I managed to just take a breather and just go, you can do this. And I finished finished those last couple of bits of shopping and went through the checkouts. And then when I was outside, I was able to take my mask off, have a drink, and then that helped me to calm down. So it's kind of upset our kind of status quo because sometimes we have to work quite hard don't we to kind of get our routines in place and do things that you know are routine for us and make our life feel comfortable and it takes us all the way out of that comfort zone doesn't it? massively routine for, for me is uh i'm a big stickler to, to routine and 
you know, like I'm going through a bit of an adjustment period of different things at the moment. Um, but, you know, I've got a choice of that now. Hmm. Uh, and so I've got a bit more self-control over that. Sure. OK, let's just have uh, Kirsty, have you got any um, particular views on that little bit? You know, how has the pandemic changed your life? Yes, um, I use uh, every day. I used to every day after a course. I used to walk up to my local gym to have a bit of a walk out to keep my mind calm. And ever since the pandemic come in, I have to do lessons or when the pandemic stopped, I was a student at course, so all my lessons was done online. But I could see my friends, my family, and it just felt this. And now I, now I don't go back to the gym because of another doctor. And I think it takes my way of looking at yeah, how grateful we are to still be here and still be yeah, able to do stuff. I'm lucky that I they'll be able to do a bit of work here at AF because of technology. Hmm. Well, I suppose there's, you know, it, it's made us appreciate there's lots of things to be grateful for, hasn't it, Kirsty? But at the same time, it's made us make some adjustments that we might find really, really difficult, you know, and, and, to, and to, you know, to miss people that we were around quite a lot before. Gavin, what, what views have you got? I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I can relate to a lot of what Sam and Kirsty have already said, but I think one of the things I think what really was, it was during the pandemic, during the lockdowns and stuff, I think at that very early stage, there was just that worry and that worry about, you know, your family getting it, you getting it. Are you going to be able? Are you going to see certain loved ones again? And I think for me, I think what what it's what it's brought for me is is that actually how you um, how you appreciate about the people who you've still got around you and things. So you know, when I see my nan or my family, I'm glad to see them, you sure. know, and things and that. So yeah, I think it makes you think about that bit that a bit more. Do you think there's a, maybe then, uh, Gavin, maybe a little bit less tension in households between family members? You know, when before, you know, you could have a little argument with your family member, but now you've learned how to appreciate them more, perhaps. Yeah, I think there's that whole sort of thing like, you know, where if you might have disagreed on something or you might have not always um, saw eye to eye, now, now it's kind of like, you know, maybe you'd leave it a day rather than a couple of weeks to to ring back and things. So, yeah, definitely. So it kind of encourages you to make more of an effort. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can I add something there? Of course you can, Sam. I think it, it's different. I think it, it depends on the circumstances of how you live. So I live on my own and, you know, like, not that I like to be argumentative, but sometimes if there is something that, you know, actually, if I have an argument, it's a bit of an engagement with someone, you know, and I think that, um, that there is a bit where, you know, that, that there was arguments I had in lockdowns, family members, and, you know, that that's normal and that's life. Um, but um, may, maybe it's made us all a little bit firmer on, uh, like, knowing what our rights are and, you know, being able to, you know learn what those are because our rights have been taken away in effect so it's about finding our feet and going these are our rights and maybe sam maybe knowing a bit more who we are i guess as individuals yeah yeah, yeah okay oh that's interesting okay let's um let's uh, whiz on to the next question it's coming to you again sam all right so yeah <laughs> sorry uh so uh i mean I mean, there's an interesting word in here that we'll kind of think about while we're doing this, but what are your hopes for getting back to normal? And uh, I'll emphasise the normal because I'm not completely sure what normal is, but what are your hopes for getting back to maybe what was pre-pandemic -pre type normality? Yeah. I, I, I always like this thing about the question of what normal is, and I say it's, um, it's a cycle on the washing machine and it changes between machines. 
Um, and that, that's the same with people, isn't it? Normal is different for everyone. Um, so people shouldn't feel pressure just because of what uh, someone else is doing. Um, you should stick to your own guns. For me, um, it, it's being able to see friends. It's being able to see family. Uh, to be able to go and enjoy the things that I really enjoy. So um, uh, people know that I, I'm a massive rugby fan. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I've been able to go and uh, watch some uh, live matches at Saracens, which is quite nice to be able to connect up with one of my friends. It's also a colleague um, and chill out that way um, uh, to play some rugby, um, to get injured in rugby, which I currently have. Um, you know, the, these are things that, you know, little, little small things that make a difference in your life. Um, you know, just being able to see work colleagues and people in person. Uh, I think, you know, stuck behind a screen, like someone that's a massive technology fan, as I am. I've actually almost, not, not that I despise technology or hate it. I think, I, I just think that it's just not quite the same. Um, you know, I can put on quite a good front. I can look like I'm quite happy. Um, uh, but I think, you know, go into things where people can properly read your body language and go, are you really OK? You know, um, and I think that normal has changed uh, and what normal is now, you know, like uh, if I go into a supermarket, I might put a mask on now. That's something a couple of years ago I really would never have thought about doing. Um, and, you know, despite the rules saying you don't need to, you know, if that's what makes me feel comfortable at that point, that's what I will do. Um, and I'm not saying it will be everywhere, but, you know, it's about you, you basically taking control of what you can control. Um, and, you know, someone else not telling you that I, I've been kind of fed up of listening to other people telling us what we have to do and I know that they've had to do it to to keep us safe etc but um it being positive in that outlook I think is really important that everyone uh, is able to express themselves and be individuals and that's what life's about really and I think for me it's it's just seeing people being happy again is 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 nice um, and seeing people where technology is a big divide. There's people, um, uh, one of my friends I didn't see really practically for a couple of years um, with the pandemic, um, you know, they, they, they had a not really a technology user um, and even struggle with a phone. And so face to face stuff is really important for me. Yeah, I, I guess um, there's a, you know, a little bit that you said in there, Sam, about learning the lessons about what we are in control of and what we can control for ourselves yep. and accepting things that are outside of our control and then you know in essence there's quite a lot of freedom in that isn't there you know to be able to free yourself from what other people might think and to you know I know I look around at the moment and I'll go to the supermarkets at the weekend and everybody now is or the majority of people are running around without a mask and there's me and my son in there with a the mask on and I'm thinking oh, this thing hasn't gone away yet. You know, you may have, the rules may have kind of limited, but uh, it hasn't gone away. I think it's probably like down to everyone's circumstances mm -hmm. on how they've seen it. Uh, you know, I've known quite a few people that have passed away with, uh, with COVID. I am, you know, I've had COVID twice myself mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, kind of know the environment that I was in where I probably got it. Um, and you know i wouldn't i wouldn't change how i was in those environments but you know you, you just don't know where you, you where where it is and i think that's the thing it's invisible um where wearing a mask is quite visible and actually if that offers you that little bit of more reassurance then that's really important yeah okay oh arnie Come and ask you, Kirsty, just if you've got anything to add to that in terms of what yeah, you are. I think I agree with Sam as yeah, me personally is like meeting new people, doing mm. talks, 
to die and really help people who got Yanni disability to understand it's okay to go out and wear masks. If that make you feel safe and sure. uh, yeah, knowing yeah, it's so better you can choose if you, it's a big choice whether you want to wear a mask or you don't. It's nice, it's nice to get out and about and see your friends and get back into some social activity, isn't it? But to feel safe is really, really important. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, OK, lovely. Thank you, Kirsty. And Gavin, you got a view? I mean, you know, I think it's like what I said to my wife the other day is, you know, is we have to try and go back to normal now and we have to try and carry on like we did post pandemic. And I mean, you know, literally just this very last very weekend and over the Jubilee weekend, we did things. We went out. We, you know, we enjoyed things. We went to we went to the theatre twice last weekend and things which was great and you know and we went out for a meal we went out and sat outside and had our meal Th things we used to do before the pandemic and things and I think you do have that dread of oh my god it's there you know I can't see it and things and when you hear somebody cough or when you hear you know and you know you're in a crowded place and you're likely that you know you could be one of them people who could walk out with Covid if someone was near you with it but I think you just have to think that you know like I've had Covid twice as well and you know, I think it's kind of like you have to think like, you know, that, you know, if you've had it twice or if you had it once and you, you know, it's it's just one of them things we have to live with COVID now. Um, but you do still have that anxious fear. I was on a bus um, on Monday and um, someone sat next to me and I always wear a face mask on the bus. That's probably one of the most places I always wear it because I think that's a place where it's very good to wear a, a mask because there's lots of, you know because you're in a tight in environment and somebody came and sat next to me and they were they didn't have a mask on and they were coughing and spluttering and sneezing and I got up and I moved and this person like gave me a very um filthy look and I just sort of had to say I'm, I'm you know I'm really sorry I just you know I have to think, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, that's all I could say. But sometimes I think you have to think of yourself. If people aren't following those measures properly, you have to think of yourself and think about what is best and use your own um, your own inklings to things. So, you know, this has been a few days now since then and touch wood, I, you know, I haven't got it again, but you just don't know, you know, there's lots of things at the moment, lots of other colds and hay fever and things, and this person might have just had that, but you just don't know. And I think that's probably what's still probably the lot of the anxiety for people will be is we don't know and things. I, mean, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Gavin, that, you know, when you're when you're in somewhere that's enclosed with other human beings, A, it's respectful to think of somebody else, isn't it? And also for the other person to think of you. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, to, to wear a mask on a bus is respectful for the other people on it. You know, it's not just, you know, it's thinking of yourself and your own safety, but it's also thinking of somebody else. And I think that's it. To my mind, it's a very kind thing to do, and you don't, you shouldn't be apologising for it. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, come to you, come to you, Gavin, now with the next uh, question on my little hit list, and that is, um, how do you think you deal with difficult feelings or anxieties about getting back to normal, Gavin? And we use that normal word advisedly again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think it's again it's about thinking about again like you know what can you do like i say we went to like i've already said about we went to the fieta twice and you know in two days of each other on the friday evening and the saturday evening and both those times it's you know very packed with people and you know you do again had that that sense of oh my gosh you know I've been places twice now but I think as long as you've got tests and as long as you take that test maybe when you feel you need to like I took one 
um, yesterday just to double check. I think it gives you that kind of that relief sense to to know that, you know, you when you see the negative sign, but you haven't got it and things and stuff. But I think it's also just using that sense of, you know, like, you know, now we've had COVID and we're living with COVID. It's just about having that um, that common sense to think about, like, when's a good time to do a test? You know, are, am I coming in? Am I going to be around vulnerable people? Am I going, you know, I'm going to see my nan tomorrow. I've been to two theatre shows. You know, I haven't got any signs. Take a test. If I have signs and the test still says negative, but I still might have signs. I think it's just that safe thing of saying, actually, I think it's probably best I just stay indoors for a couple of days and things because, you know, I mean, you know, it is still around and we have to we have to live with it, which means that we should all have that responsibility of taking taking you know taking it amongst ourselves to make sure that people are safe and things um you know if i if i get quite what i feel are quite bad um covid symptoms and stuff and i've got a meeting in work or i you know or i'm going in the office that day it's about messaging and saying look i've got these symptoms what shall i do i think it's one of them thing about asking advice you know getting other people's advice so then you know you're not the one making the shots but then you also you're communicating with other people to make sure that everybody is safe and i feel that that's something which we now have to, as a society and as and as people need to think about when we're when we're um doing this so yeah i think those thoughts are probably the thoughts which I keep in mind now that I am going out more and I am doing things is about you know am I safe to do mm. this and am I being safe for other people if you know with the fact that Covid is still about. And now I mean just a just kind of a little bit of a follow on Gavin how do you know any difficult feelings that you've you know when you first start going out it's kind of more anxious than when you go out later on, isn't it? How have you dealt with any difficult feelings that you might have had? I mean, yes, I think it, it is difficult um, and it, I have had difficult times. I mean, there was times um, only in the last few months that both me and my wife have both said, oh, let's go to the pub or let's go to the cinema or let's go to let's do this. And then it's just like, actually, now I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, because I think when you've been indoors so long, you kind of get comfortable and your, your home becomes that safe zone. And I have anxiety as it is. So um, being indoors for nearly two years was a fantastic thing as well as also for my anxiety. But also it's made it that I feel that my anxiety has come out more since the pandemic and things and and stuff and i think you know when you it's that hardship of actually i don't want to do this i don't want to do this to actually you know what i'm going to do it and then you actually really enjoyed it i mean i think both me and my wife last weekend we didn't want to do it you know a part of us did not want to do the thing because both of us have anxiety both of us felt like oh it might just be easier to stay in watch a film on the tv and you know order a takeaway and things but i think once you do that and you get out you actually have that sense of i've done it and it's nice and it's a nice feeling and i think it is good to go out and socialize with friends or just with you just just go out in general and and things there's a lot of worries and a lot of upset in the world at the moment which probably will bring up people a lot of worries and a lot of anxiety but i think it's about finding that gap of being able to still have fun to still have laughs and to still make memories mm -hmm. and smile yeah smiling always helps doesn't it yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's a it's a winner always around that isn't it yeah <laughs> kirsty i want to pop to you uh, and see what you've got to say on the matter um, you know, how do you deal with uh, sort of any difficult feelings or anxieties that you might have around normality or getting back to normal? I think Gavin is spot on. Yeah, you know, when the uh, first we did, uh, we did and was lifted, I'm thinking, okay, what what do we do? We can't <laughs> just go into the pub. We have to wear face masks, and I don't. I find it hard to. Uh, 
become a token, I find it hard to wear a face mask. But what you and it, how I deal with bad feeling is talking to people, say, yeah, it's okay, and just listen to people. People need someone to just be a decision if it if it too big or too small to just to think to talk to have that it's written not like on a screen but in person it's so important for people to meet up tell them about the stories because a lot of people in lockdown didn't have anyone to talk to your like parents in care no of the family members was allowed to go and visit them. So it is so important to keep in touch friends, family, colleagues to, to talk best to see how you have been. I mean, I guess, um, Kirsty, that, you know, to be listened to and heard um, is a massively important thing, isn't it? And to, you know, you don't necessarily yep. need answers to questions, do you? You just need to talk. And someone to be able to listen and, and say, okay, but I prefer it. How can we make it better? Sure. Yeah. I mean, to me, that makes absolute sense, Kirsty, I have to say. Uh, uh, and that's uh, totally sensible. Sam, have you got any views on... Um, uh, uh, how you deal with difficult feelings and anxieties? I think I yeah I probably try and talk to people more now, um, uh, like, uh, and I I think you know people people aren't afraid to to listen now. I think people make more time. Um, so, um, I I went away last week. I went to court and going through an airport for the first time since the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's probably it was quite anxiety because it's like oh there's going to be a lot of people around and there was lots of things about flight delays all of this and um so i just took a little bit of control and paid to go fast track through security sure um and you know best one of the best seven pounds i've ever spent really you know i I was in and out of the security within like 10 minutes and i think people would have been in there an hour an hour and a half um uh, and i think you know then I was able to go into the airport and find somewhere quiet to go and have a drink and just chill out before getting on the plane. So kind of we're back a little bit into, you know, hey, we're, we're talking, but we're also thinking what bits of this can I take control of? Yeah, to exactly. To make my, my, myself feel well. Yeah. Yeah, the kind of, yeah. Okay. I mean, that makes absolute sense. Uh, Gavin, I'm going to pop back to you. And uh, another question for you, sir. Uh, what what parts of the community, family, friends, or pets, are important to you? I think all is um, is important to me. I mean, you know, family was a big thing on my mind throughout the whole pandemic, and you know, like my, you know, I lost my mum back in two thousand and twelve, so. You know, it wasn't like, you know, I think I missed her a lot during mm. that because I think, you know, there's times where you feel like, you know, what, you know, what do I do? What do I, and I think, you know, you kind of miss the people who aren't around mm. as much in that kind of thing. So I think that, you know, that was one. And then obviously my grandparents, I mean, you know, knowing that they're elderly, knowing that they were um you know that they you know you you know you couldn't see them i mean not seeing them for nearly three months was hard but obviously ringing them and seeing on facetime was great um when we were able to go and see them in parts of the pandemic when you were allowed to go in and sit in gardens we made the most of that and then when we weren't we made the most again on on facetime and things and then i think i think the best time actually i think the best bit for me was actually when they allowed hugging because i think you know you kind of forget what a hug is when you know after two years and you know like you know i think it's just that that i I, that knowing about you're able to hug now it was a really nice thing um 
friends were very important as well throughout the pandemic we tried our hardest to still stay in touch with them and again on days where you know you know in months where you're allowed to see people we made the most of um staying out i think what really was a really nice thing for me through the pandemic actually was i live in a block of flats and you know during the summer periods of the pandemic i remember that people were going out sitting in sitting out on the in the in you know out on their balconies or out the side of balconies all in good social distancing and we would have like mini little parties like maybe a barbecue so self-distanced barbecue or a few drinks and it kind of just brought the neighbors really close mm. and i think that's actually something i miss now because even during like the jubilee celebrations and that no one did it everyone kind of went back to their own kind of lives and I kind of missed that because that was something what kind of used to get me through every week, you know, knowing that, you know, the following Saturday there was going to be a sit outside or on the Wednesday evening and things after work, after working from home, you can go outside and sit and talk to the neighbours and you can talk about your fears and your worries. And I think that's something which I do actually miss now and things is things like that. We had a big birthday celebration for all the people in the flats who had big birthdays that year and and things and we had them in one weekend and things and it was all socially distanced outside not in obviously we weren't breaking any rules and it was that was i think a really nice part something i wish i wish was which which i wish it was right now um but i think also my you know pets uh, you know i've got a dog um alfie and you know, he was something what I think really did keep my me and my wife going because we had to still take him out. So it meant we had to have our hours exercise during the pandemic, you know, even if it was just the one of us taking him. So I remember the routine was that I would take him first thing in the morning. And then obviously when I had work later on in the day, my wife would take him out. And that meant that we both still had our one hours exercise we're allowed to do. And I think, you know, if we hadn't had our Alfie, I don't think either of us would have gone out because we would have been that worried about going out in the in, in the pandemic. So, yeah, um, I think my pet was very important to me because he kept me going mentally, physically and healthily. So. Yeah, I mean, thanks, Gavin. I mean, I do I do really like the sound of uh, people connecting on balconies and in you know, local community and quite often when there's something massively traumatic happening in the community there's sometimes unexpected benefits aren't there and, and, it, yeah. and it's, a, it's a shame that it's kind of lapsed back isn't it yeah it's just really weird now because like you know there's been a few big weekends that have come up and you just think oh everyone's going to be sitting outside again and they're not you know it's like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that is a that's a shame, but it kind of shows how kind of insular we are, you know, in many ways, unfortunately. Mm. Kirsty, let me come to you and, and get your view. I mean, uh, we know you've got plenty of friends, and I don't know if you have any pets, but uh, what's I your thoughts? So I've got a dog. Okay. He's a yeah. So during the first lockdown, I had moved my family out. For Israel, uh, I went to stay with a friend and she was doing her garden up. So I was having her pet her garden, do her to go for your walks with my friend. So I tell you, so you've been, you're keeping yourself amused with a bit of gardening as well. Yeah, so. and a bit of dead resins and just talking uh, because we said, uh, me and my sister, to a house uh, so like every like, couple of weekends we sit in the garden play a couple of cards and yeah just talk and get things of like turns yeah, well talking is vitally important i mean i do i i'm a, I'm a little bit jealous of people that have dogs kirsty because dogs are incredibly therapeutic you know, just the yeah, and and certainly I agree with Gavin about the hugging bit as well. I mean, yes. I'm not, I'm I'm not a massive one for, for being hugged by strangers, but you kind of want to hug a lot of people now, don't you? You know. 
Did you um, did you get to hug plenty of people, Kirsty? Um, I'm not a hugger, really, <laughs> to be fair. But I know what Gavin really like. Yeah, human contact is very important. Very important. Yeah, you know, when I go to meetings, I like to shake people's hands. Yeah, yeah, what I do if I meet people, I will shake your hands. It's sure. just it's something that I do, something sure. that I always do. If, if I go to a meeting, I will shake your hands. Yeah, so the human quarter is very yeah important, and I have uh, my my aunt in Fulmark. I didn't see her for three and a half months mm-hmm. and that was really upsetting because we don't often see her because she is so far away. So yeah, so when the uh, lockdown we did it was, it, did, it was nice to go and see family members. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it makes you realise how important sometimes family members are when we can kind of not appreciate them all the time can we yeah okay sam i'm gonna pop over to you what uh, what what thoughts have you got i think that this is probably one of the most emotional questions um you know friends family community are always like really important things that we may not have thought about before um, you know those difficult conversations, the ones we lost in lockdowns, and that that was quite emotional. Um, and having like family around to rally and finding different ways of trying to cope. Um, so we we did a lot of like Zoom quizzes, sure. uh, like a lot of people, um, and that that was a, that was a really nice way of staying connected. Um, strange, you know, like we're not. A, a, we had like quite a close uh we've got a, quite a large family but people like all in, in surrounding towns and then we've got one of my sisters in australia um so quite odd you know to, to stay and like looking at the timing so it worked out right um i think you know uh like gavin you said about your uh your neighbors and your community uh so as the kickoff of the pandemic me and one of my other neighbors spoke and um we basically set up a, a Facebook page uh, for where we, we live um, and there's like 77 flats here so quite a large place um, and uh, we, we I, so literally in the, it, I, I've been at a ninja sneaking around the different blocks at, uh, like uh, late at night to put up these posters and help people stay connected um, so people were able to say you know I need help shopping uh, I've got this does anyone want this before I get rid of it um, those things are really important. Um, you know, I think family massive one for me. You know, um, you know, like I, I, that bit you said about human contact. I remember um, the first time I hugged my grandma when we were allowed, and uh, I, I started crying. You know, a simple hug. I'm, I'm not a very tactile person of like wanting hugs all the time, but you know, it's probably maybe a bit more huggy in a lot of ways. Um, uh, but then acknowledging, you know, sometimes uh, different things can be quite overwhelming. You know, um, a lot of my friends, uh, friends group, um, they probably didn't use that WhatsApp massively before. Now there's too much. I have to mute them and take myself out of them because I can't keep up with it. And um, that's really sad in some ways, but it's what I have to do to not let myself be overwhelmed. I, I, I think it's it's nice and lovely that we can we, we found ways to connect and to do that community stuff and what you were explaining about in the flats and getting around and flyering people you know it, it just shows we know what what can be done and, and then it's about the will to how we do it a lot more often isn't it sometimes yeah and I think that's it like mm. we've reasonably sustained it quite well as a platform because it, it's it, it's one people often talk about the weather, you know, you weather, uh, what what bins is it, you know, like the bin, all silly kind of stuff, but um, really important communication. And, you know, from uh, the management agency that runs like uh, overseas the buck, if they didn't have that group, it would cost them a lot more money. Um, 
and equally we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have as better feedback into them um and like uh, we had the lifts out in one of the blocks a couple of weeks ago and it's like can someone help me with the pram and the buggy you know um uh, they've got a children and um and then they've got a child with disability so they need a, a bit more hands and they moved in because it had a lift and if the lift's not working it's a uh, fundamental but then that's where community should be there to help and step up absolutely 100 percent agree with you sam on that one can right, I just I think add so. something else very quickly yeah. on that one? Yeah, I think it's important with work as well, as well that you know that you know so a lot of people think that work is just work, but I don't think it was um, for 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 me in in you know like there would be times where we would come on just for ordinary meetings, but like for the first half an hour we would just talk about you know our lockdown time times and things and we would have coffee mornings we would make where we could just go and talk and things and i remember <clears throat> there was one meeting in general where you know like all the nurses got together and they got to talk and show emotions about what has been going on and i think it just brings that kind of that reality that yes it was a hard time there was a, you know, it, it was a difficult things and it just, I think it brought like a lot of the nurses and people closer with knowing what everyone's going through differently sort of thing. So, yeah, I think it was important with work as well when it came to the things because, yeah. So that sort of social aspect of work. Yeah. Kirsty. Mm. Yeah, I agree because in a first short down, I couldn't find any, uh, any work and I got in contact with Dirt and I started together and Dirt and I think that I really want to be involved with this project. I'm so grateful to All Stars for giving me its opportunity to uh, do it. It gave me something to focus on sure. as well. It's a, it's like a distraction, isn't it? And uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, folks, I'm going to think we're getting down to the to the last question in our uh, in our nice little chat today, and uh, we're going to go out with a blaze of glory with you, Kirsty, if you don't mind. <laughs> and that is. Um, how are you uh, reconnecting with your friends, family and community? So I, so I, it's been a tough couple of years since the pandemic started. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I got, I what with what and to help me find a stop. I am now a volunteer for Purple All Stars. It is really important for me to help other people to help myself to understand how other people work. So how I help myself by offering my time to other people to, oh. to just to let people know people are out there to support you guys and so we can talk about whatever it is you want to talk about and yeah it's really important for me to get out now and do work better first now because we do a lot of stuff online and it's important for people to get out and meet people and and to see it's okay to that it's okay to have that human contact I, th I think to, to get out there and do some voluntary stuff, right, where you're out there connecting with people that you've probably never met before and, you know. And to meet new friends, to make <laughs> new friends and yeah. to feel like you are a part of something, like you are a part of something helpful because, yeah, what people need at the moment to feel a part of something. I know I did where I, when we first came into the lockdown, I feel like, where do I go from here now? Because no one was taking on volunteers. And I think it, it's time for people 
to result and yeah. just do whatever you make just to know you can always do it I, th I think you can get through everything I, th I think what you say is perfect um Kirsty right in terms of it's so so important to feel a part of something isn't it and then when you're a part of that something it, it has the ability to make you happy right and and simple things make us happy not complex things you know it's about to connect with stuff and to meet new friends and new people you know those are massively important things for our own happiness got anything else you want to say on that um no okay we'll come back you ever think you ever think kirsty i'll pop over to gavin and then we'll come back yeah gavin? i think okay <laughs> I think with me, it's um, I think you know coming out now and you know ha going back into um into the new era of life, as I like to call it, instead of normal life, you know, new era of life. I think it's about remembering how people might have gone through. Like you are an individual person, and you know I've gone through the stuff I went through, but there's people who have gone through a lot more, and especially with other stuff going in the world at the moment and things. You know, there's still a lot more grief and and possibly hurt as well. And I think what's important for me, I feel as a person of the community, and and that as well as with family and friends is to when I'm walking around or going on a bus or doing whatever it's just to smile at people mm -hmm. I think when you give someone a smile it just it just automatically makes their day you know I walked past somebody the other day at the bus stop and I met they look quite upset about something what it was I have no idea but I just gave them a smile and you know they smile back and I think it's just that smile you give gives that person that that extra bit of oomph to be like okay you know i'm going through this but that person's just smiled at me sometimes people don't smile back you know the amount of people i've smiled at who just walked past and not said anything or the amount of people i've said morning smile to just walked past and said nothing but at the end of the day at least you've you've done your best and you never know that person who walked past you might go home and think you know what I, that person walked by me earlier when I was feeling like this and he's just that person smiled at me so even if it doesn't make a deal at the time it might make that big difference later on in that day and I think that's the most important thing I like to do now is just wherever I go whatever I do is just smile and say hello or or just say morning or evening to people and things and that and not worry about what I get back um somebody on the bus to me the other day actually said to me um that i ha you know you know i have a lovely smile and i think that made my difference because you know this person just wanted to sit down and i moved and sat and let them sit down and everything things and that and they said oh i'm so sorry and i said no don't worry about it and she said well one thing is what's lovely is is you've got a lovely smile and I think that's just lovely to hear. And that's kind of what makes the difference to me going forward. I, I, th I think also, Gavin, you shouldn't underestimate the difference it makes to other people. You know, I mean, even if, you know, like you say, uh, it sometimes can make the difference between somebody coping with their day and not coping with their day. It can bring a little ray of sunshine, can't it? It's, a, it's a not a difficult thing to do, but it's a really good outcome quite often. Mm. So thanks for that, Gavin. Sam, I love that. Smiling is a really important thing. Yeah. You know, smiling is infectious, <laughs> uh, generally. Um, and if you are having a bad day, it is always good to see that. And when you smile, I think you feel it through your body. Um, so that that's important. Um, I think it's a, it's a a strange one. It's um, lots of, as you say, like reconnecting with lots of elements of our lives that have been missing. Um, so working out how that works now uh, i think one of the most amazing things for me is like my my nieces and my nephews and how much they've grown in this time um and it, it's amazing you know like some of the conversations i have with them now and go i i go wow i i you know like getting used to that um 
and I think about community is that you know everyone has been having so much stuff delivered online um, and for me it's looking at like some of the businesses that are in town you know small businesses that need your money so actually thinking oh yeah I could go there instead that calf's uh, an independent calf that could have my money they they'll quite like it um, and I'm a big foodie I like yummy food so um, I think thinking about things like that I think that online's been great but um, you know I, 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 I don't think I, I think in the pandemic I think I've done maybe one or two online shops because I like the human element of shopping, choosing the stuff yourself. Um, but I think, yeah, that uh, we, we are all, all reconnecting in different ways and we shouldn't be afraid um, of, if something does feel like a little bit emotional, just take a moment, take a pause and, you know, think, you know, life is getting better. Um, and, you know, life is a bit of a cycle. It chucks things at us that we don't know. Um, and it can be pretty cruel, but um, it's being there to support each other. And I think, you know, um, whether you choose to wear your face, a face mask or not, is that it's a personal choice. Um, I like, uh, as you know, like, as I've become more confident, if that makes sense, I possibly don't wear them as much as I, I used to, but I still have some on me all, pretty much all of the time. Um, but I think that I can see people's smiles and people can see my smile uh, going back to that really lovely point. Because I think when we were wearing face masks, people, I, I, I said, like, I can't see smiles. And someone said, I can always see a smile, even if someone's wearing a face mask. Maybe that's me not being able to read people's body language very well. But it's quite nice when you don't, when you can see it and you can just go, wow, you look really good, you know. And to see people beyond seeing them in 2D is amazing. Thanks, Sam. Brilliant. Kirsty, I'm just going to pop back to you. you any other little thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I think, um, I think just making, you know, going back into the community, try and make a difference to people you have. It may be small or maybe big. But I am working with Purple Star to make stuff better for people who got young and disabilities. And also to just really show that people are out here to support you in everywhere, big or small. Someone will be able to help you in everywhere. Don't be scared to come forward and say, OK, I'm having a bit of a bad day. What do I do? Don't. Yeah, it, it's good to come out. It it nice to your uh, Gavin and send uh Sam and Gavin say it's so nice to see people faces uh how we have been. Thanks, Kirsty. That's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna I think maybe just before we finish, I think I'm gonna come back to each of you and just ask you just to have a a final thought. Or a, or a one thing that you might think um, you'd want to share with everybody that's listening to this and say um, what you hope for them, right, when we come back and what you think you've learned and what you've hoped for people out there in the community. Do you want to think about that or do you want me to come straight onto it? I can Kirsty, you you nod, Kirsty, you're nodding, I'm going to come. Um, you, have you got a final thought you want to share? Please go to Sam. For a minute, go to them. Yeah, no worries. Sam, far away. OK, life is short, so enjoy it. And make sure you smile. Uh, and if you've got any worries, talk to people, because there's always people there to help. Magic. Thanks, Sam. Kev? Um, you know, I think, you know, with a lot of what's going on in the world at the moment, you know, there's going to be good days, there's going to be hard days. But just remember that, you know, a smile can always make that day better. So whoever you see, you know, whether it's a dog walker, family or somebody just on a bus, just give them a smile because it could make their day. Brilliant. Thanks, Kev. And Kirsty, you got you got one? Be proud of what you have achieved and 
don't ever give up. It always helps somewhere. Perfect. Thank you so much, you guys. It's been absolutely brilliant and lovely, lovely talking to you as ever. And I think that covers off uh, what we've got to talk about today. And I hope everybody that's out there has enjoyed it. And so a big thank you to Kirsty, Sam and Gavin. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your time as well, Ian, and uh, facilitating. Uh, never, never a problem, Sam. <laughs>